Welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. I'm Biola Alabi. Welcome back. I'm Tundra Biola. This Saturday, runoff governorship polls is expected to bring to a close the 2019 general election. But beyond the balloting, tallying of numbers, and declaration of results, many Nigerians are apprehensive to how much damage that has been done to not just the country's body politic, but also to the issues of national integration. To help give us some perspective on this and more is Wale Oluwade, who is a financial expert and good governance consultant. Wale Duwale currently runs Growth Masters Consulting in Abuja, where he has now joined us from our Rise Studios. You're welcome to the program. Thank you very much, Biola. Thank you, Tundu. Good morning. Good morning. So I want to start out yeah. by um, going back a little bit. I think that's what today is going to be about, is reflecting as we also look forward uh, a bit of a post-mortem. The last time I spoke to you, we were yeah. talking about the primaries. And uh, we were talking to, actually, yeah. Takar was one of the places we talked about. Um, when we were talking about primaries. And you seemed really positive about the Nigerian primaries. If you look at from where we started yeah. to where we are now, I would like to just get your general feeling. I mean, I specifically remember you saying that the process that you have been um, witnessing, especially I think it was during the PDP primaries, that it is probably one of the best yeah. primaries you've witnessed. And I want to see, just get your yeah. sense of yeah. primaries across the country from where we started and where we have ended up. Just let me, how do you feel? Um, thank you, Diola, once again. Um, it's a mixed feeling, you know, but um, on the scale, I think I feel more uh, disappointment, you know, with uh, uh, the conduct of uh, the general elections this year, 2019, you know, um, and I say that, you know, with a heavy heart because I thought um, with the progress we made 2015, that we would have built on, on that, you know, 2019, you know, so that we could go forward, you know, eventually having a stable, you know, and, um, and virile, you know, democracy. But as it is, I'm, 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 I'm actually, you know, afraid because you're correct, Viola. On the 7th of October, you know, we were here talking about the PDP primaries at Port Harcourt, you know, that morning. They were still collating results. And I said, and I, and I, and I would like to re repeat myself, you know, that, was, that is perhaps the best primaries of any political party I've witnessed. And that accounted for the reason why, of all the 13 aspirants, you know, for the presidential uh, candidature of PDP, not a single one of them, you know, went to court. Not a single one of them protested, you know. The they, they, uh, post-primaries of, primaries of the PDP, they, they, they came together, you know, closed ranks, forged a common front, and were able to go into the general elections, you know, in, as a united family. And we have all seen, you know, how that played out. But that is for the PDP. On the other hand, the, the other major, uh, I mean, the ruling party, the APC, we witnessed, you know, the primaries, I mean, in the, uh, for the presidency, they had um, an affirmative primary, you know, so, and even that was not properly done because the, 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 the total votes cast for, the, for President Buhari 2015 general elections was about 15.2 something you know, million. But then at the primaries of the APC, they, they, they returned with an affirmative you know, uh, figures of uh, um, APC, um, elect, uh, APC members across Nigeria, 14.9 million people. So the question to ask is, how did APC get all these 14.9 million people as members? So do they have a register that could be, I mean, audited to see, you know, the, 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 the information of all these members? But that is for the uh, presidential primaries, you know. For all the states of Nigeria, 36 states and the FCT, we, we all witnessed, you know, the debacle, the fiasco that the APC primaries, you know, became. Was it Lagos where, on the one hand, the, 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 the supervisors sent from, the, from APC headquarters to Lagos, you know, said no, they couldn't conduct uh, primaries, you know, but then by, the, by, by instructions, you know, and, and an order issued by the chairman and other powers that be, they had to go back, you know, and announce results. And then, of course, you saw what played out between Ambody, the sitting governor was told in clear times you couldn't get a second time, you know, and then the, the, the preferred candidates or aspirants of the, of the godfathers in Lagos, Babajide Sonwolu, that 
that, that was on the one, and that is even better. You look, look at what happened in Ogun State, where the sitting governor, the incumbent, who was not seeking, you know, um, re-election because he's done eight years, you know, now he wanted to impose his own preferred, you know, choice of aspirants, and the party big wig said, no, you can't do that, you know, because he sat down and wrote, 40, you know, aspirants across 20-something uh, House of Assembly members, the House of Reps members, the Senate, you know, and then the governorship. And the, and the party big wigs in Abuja said no. So the party was split, you know, in two camps. And you saw a situation where the, the sitting governor of APC, you know, set up shop in another, you know, party, APM, I think, you know, and was sponsoring, you know, openly campaigning for the, 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 the candidates, you know, the, the, the candidate of that party against his own, and, he, and he was still a member of the of the APC. You know, you saw a situation where the, the president went to 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 Ogun State to campaign, and he said, "Okay, vote for me at the presidential elections, but then you can vote for any governorship candidate of your choice." And he is the president on the platform of the All Progressives Congress. You can go on to Zamfara. You know, where it ended up, the primaries ended up in a fiasco. So, and it took the intervention, you know, some would say by sleight of hand, you know, of both the, the Attorney General, that is the government of the APC, you know, and the courts, you know, coming to rescue them to, to have um, APC, you know, ended up, end up on the ballot, you know, for, for the March uh, 23rd elections. You can move to, 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 to or your state. It wasn't, too, it wasn't too different, even though they were able to manage, you know, the, the, the fallout from the primaries. But go to Rivers. Rivers State, in the history of Nigeria, ended up not having a governorship candidate, a senatorial candidate, a House of Rep candidate, I mean, House of Assembly candidate in the 2019 general elections. Why? Because of lawlessness, brigandage, you know, and, and lack of adherence to party rules, party discipline, you know, party guidelines, you know, because you ha here you have an individual, you know, the current Minister for Transport, you know, trying to play God and say, okay, I've decided this is the person that is going to be, you know, the candidate of the party, and every other person should obey my instructions. And some other interested aspirant that said, we don't mind you having a preferred choice, but let the space not be constricted. Open the space, let, let there be free contest. So if we lose, we close rank and support whoever emerges as the candidate. But he put, the, the minister put his feet down and said no. So that is the debacle we have in, uh, in, 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 in Rivers, that this played out, you know, even in the conduct of the general elections, and the list goes on, you know. So what, what's my sense of where we are now democratically? You see, democracy, you know, in popular, you know, um, um, parlance, I mean, has some, um, it's, it's got some fundamental principles that makes it different from every other form of government. And it's commonly said, and I tend to agree that the best or the worst form of democracy is better than the worst form of, or the best form of, of tyranny. I, I would prefer democracy any day, any time. But if you don't have separation of powers, because that is what democracy entails, separation of powers, checks and balances, the rule of law, um, the sanctity of the ballot box, then if you don't have, I mean, the, the, the independence of state institutions, and of course, you know, finally, good governance. These are the six, you know, plans upon which, you know, sound democracy, you know, rest. Once you tinker with any of these six principles, you are no longer in a democracy. Now, if I begin to analyze each of these six principles I've highlighted, you will see that you, sh you, you should agree with me that we are in a very precarious situation in this democracy, you know, and I, I am afraid, you know, going forward because, like I said, when, when I started, the gains we seemed to, make, to have made in 2015, I think we've lost it in 2019. And for me, the, the, the nuclear um, um, device, the, 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 the nuclear, what is nuclear in all of this is the role of the military because, I mean, I'm not too young to, have, to, have, to, to be fully, you know, aware of the role the military, especially uh, the military dictatorship, played in the stunted growth in the, in the underdevelopment of Nigeria, hitherto. And for me to, to be alive, to see, as it were, the military play the kind of role they played in these 2019 general elections gives me great cause for concern. And if there is any, um, any outcome from INEC, because I have a very, very uncharitable um, um, opinion of, of this current INEC. But if there is anything maybe they've done in the last couple of days to try to redeem their, you know, much battered image and reputation, it is that they actually came out to say they also deplore the role the military played in our elections. Because in a democracy, in, in, in any reasonable, you know, society that says they practice democratic, the democratic governance, the, the military has absolutely no role to play in, in, in the conduct of elections. Very 
apt description of the whole catalogue of failures that we observed during the electoral process, the APC, the ruling party, has a lot to be you know, held responsible for. The writing was on the wall, as you said, from their primaries. So when the foundation is that weak, what are you going to build on top of such a faulty foundation? But then can you actually... Na- yeah, so we Absolutely. do assign blame to the um, ruling party, also to INEC, also to the mm. military, also the other political parties. When you weigh everything, who really shoulders most of the responsibility for the debacle of 2019 general elections? With, with, with all sense of um, responsibility and, and due respect to the office of the presidency, you know, I make bold to state, you know, that President Muhammad Buhari, who was and is the greatest beneficiary of an above average election. But beyond that, the, single condu- the singular conduct of former President Goodluck Jonathan, of an avowed Democrat, who did not even wait for final tally of the votes of 2015 presidential elections before making a call you know, to um, President, uh, ca- candidate Buhari then, who was in clear lead, to concede defeat. And of course, you know, people forget that the same powers, so I, I mean, straight away, I ascribe you know, a large proportion of the blame for the fiasco that 2019 general elections you know, have turned out to be, at the, I put them squarely at the feet of President Muhammad Buhari because the presidency of Nigeria, the president of Nigeria has enormous powers, especially, you know, because one of the principles of a sound democracy is independence and the strength of state institutions. Of course, we know that in Nigeria, state institutions are weak. They are prone, they are supine, they are subject to the whims and the caprices of whoever, you know, wields presidential powers. How do you explain the, the, the role I mean, the, 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 the sham that Heineck has turned out, you know, to conduct in, in, mm. in some of the states, that were, even the, the elections of February 23rd, where there seems to be two different sets of rules, you know, I mean, bordering on election conduct. In the north, card reader machines, you know, seemed not to work. And Heineck, against its own guidelines and policies that if card reader machines do not work, the elections from those places will be, will be, will be, will be null, you know, will be annulled. But... All of that went on in the north. But in the southern part of Nigeria, you know, card reader machines not only did they function, they functioned so extremely well that it, it ended up, you know, disenfranchising millions, tens of millions of potential voters. That is on the one hand. And the issue, the debacle we witnessed are the coalition centers across the states, where it took days on end for coalition of simple, you know, votes to be done, so that you gave room, you know, for manipulation, for undue pressure, you know, to be to be brought to bear on on state returning officers, coalition agents, and all of that. So, if President Mohamed Buhari, the, the the biggest beneficiary of a previous president who refused, you know, to deploy state institutions to to give him undue advantage. Imagine, uh, Tundu and Biola, if President Jonathan had used the military the way um, 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 APC used the military in 2019. In fact, let's, let me roll back in the, in the, in the period where, when APC were trying to merge, because APC is a, is a, is a formation of legacy parties, you know, CPC, um, ACN, and, and a few others, you know. Assuming um, the same mindset of the PDP hierarchy, you know, the same mindset they have, this do or die, win at all costs, we can never lose. If President Jonathan had a modicum of that mindset, APC would never have formed as a political party. I can wage my life on that. Now, secondly, I mean, even after APC formed, President Jonathan could have done everything, you know, APC did in 2019 and 2015, and would have retained, you know, political power. But he did not do that. You know, so for me, if, 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 the, if the hawks around President Buhari had come to him with all these, you know, sinister ideas, with all these dark, you know, intentions to say, you know, we could deploy the military, we can suppress votes, you know, we can intimidate, we can do votes buying, we can do open rigging. I mean, for, 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 for goodness sake, Tundu, how do you explain the national leader, the purported, the, the so-called national leader of the APC, uh, uh, of uh, former governor of Lagos State, we saw bullion vans, you know, driving into his premises in, in, in Lagos, and the man did not deny it. He owned up to it on national TV. You know, now, what was the money in the bullion vans? What was it meant for two days before elections? The, the answer is, is very obvious. For vote buying, as we speak, 
you know, the, 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 the anti-corruption agencies have not deemed it fit, you know, to arrest him, to, 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 to call him for, for explanation. What did you need him on? Because I totally against anti-corruption laws. The Anti-Corruption Act of 2011 prescribes a maximum amount of five million, minimum amount of five million that anything be above that must go through the financial system. So this man took, obviously, for money to be carried in bullion vans, must be billions, you know, to, and, and for vote buying. And up as we speak, the president hasn't said anything on that, and the list goes on. So for me, a huge, you know, percentage of the blame, I put it squarely at the feet of Mr. President because he, he, he had this enormous powers of the Nigerian presidency in his hands. And sadly, he, he used it, he deployed it to, to give himself undue advantage. And that is what has brought this democracy. I mean, this morning I read the report of the EU Observer Team to Nigeria on the 2019 elections. I read another report this morning in, in, in this day newspaper, you know, uh, by US-based um, poll, poll monitors, you know, giving, you know, very, very, you know, um, negative, you know, um, 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 I mean, feedback on what transpired in the 2019 general elections. Thank you. Um, I'm sure there will be more conversations as we reflect on 2019. And as um, Tindu said, the debacle, I'm not sure we really needed observers to tell us that I think even here at home, we've all been disappointed. And I think for someone like you who started out on a, such a positive note with the primaries, it's really good to get your, um, your take and your, your feelings around the elections. As we sort of look forward now, we still have, yesterday we had six states that were inconclusive. This morning we now have five states that are inconclusive. Do you believe that INEC is ready for these elections? Do you think that the people are ready for these upcoming elections? And in special places like Kano, in which we saw quite a bit of un unpopular behavior, what do you think is going to happen in these next um, upcoming elections? And do you think that we're ready? Yeah, thank you, Biola. In the first place, those, those um um, reruns of, of next Saturday 23rd, they were needless in the first place because I think um, it was a contrivance. It, it, the, the rerun in these states were contrived. Take Bauchi for instance. Now, it's, it's, it's interesting to note that maybe I don't know what happened, but um, INEC suddenly you know, um, seemed to, to, to begin to walk back on some of this, I mean, I mean um, fiasco. So they decided to to allow the, the, the coalition and, and announcements of results from Bochi to proceed. So they, they issued a statement yesterday and asked that by, by, by next tomorrow, the 19th, the, the, the coalition of the results from just one single local government because elections were concluded. In all these states, the six states we're talking about, Bochi, Sokoto, Plato, Benue, Adamawa, and Kano, elections were concluded, clear winners emerged by INEC guidelines and regulations. And that's my own personal opinion. And a lot of you know, public affairs analysts, you know, people who, who even probably watch and monitor elections better than myself, you know, agree. There's a general consensus that these this so-called reruns were contrivance and they were needless. Now, if INEC decided to, to go ahead and announce results from Bochi, why would he not do so for Adamawa? Because what makes Adamawa so peculiar is that the gap between PDP, Amandu Fintri, and the, and the sitting governor, um, Jubila Bindu, is about 32,000 plus votes. Now, there are 44 polling units where you have about 40,000, you know, um, registered voters. Now, registered voters, on the basis of that, that, okay, registered voters, 40,000 is higher than the gap, which is 32,000. But that's not the point. The key factor is that the, the, those who collected the PVCs out of these 40,000 are just 31,000 plus. Now, 31,000 plus people, even if they vote, if all of them vote for APC, you cannot, because of that, they cannot, you know, catch up with the 32,000 plus that uh, the PDP candidate. So there is a clear winner. But INEC went ahead, you know, to declare that, you know, inconclusive. So that's what I'm saying. There are, there are select, that, I mean, the weakness of, of state institutions, you know, is what has brought us to where we are. Because there is a tendency in every president, even in a democracy, you know, to want to ex exhibit, you know, tyrannical tendencies. Look at America, for instance. Incidentally, where we copied our brand of presidential democracy from. Donald Trump is exhibiting, I mean, from get-go has been exhibiting tendencies of tyranny, dictatorship. But then, 
I mean, currently you have, I mean, the, 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 the Office of Attorney General, the, 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 the Justice Department, you know, conducting a probe systematically and, and from the beginning. You know, the, the Mona probe was instituted. I mean, Jeff Sessions, the former Attorney General, that was appointed, someone who supported Donald Trump on the, on the campaign trail, you know, and whom Donald Trump, you know, rewarded by making him, naming him the Attorney General, recused himself, you know, from, the, from any kind of overt or covert interference in the Mueller probe, and Donald Trump could, for the life of him, couldn't understand why an appointee, you know, someone he appointed would recuse himself, because the institutions are strong and independent, and Every, almost everyone connected to the Donald Trump 2016 presidential campaign has been indicted. Some, you know, have gone to jail, like the former campaign chair, you know, um, a man, Paul Manafort, you know, he's gotten, you know, almost eight years jail, jail sentence because of the roles, you know, of, of campaign finance, you know, and all of that. Hmm. Donald Trump's personal attorney, you know, also is, is, is answering questions to, to the FBI. Now, if you, if you come back to, to Nigeria, could the, could, the, could, the, could the Nigerian police force be that independent? Could the Attorney General, could that be, could be that independent? Rather than, you know, I mean, putting pressure on INEC to play on the side, you know, of the ruling party. So, INEC had no business, you know, declaring these six states, the results of these six states, inconclusive. It befuddles my mind, because take Ogun State, and I'm an indigenous of Ogun State, the gap between PDP and APC in Ogun State, no, sorry, APC, the, 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 the candidate of the APC, Dakwa Biodun, and the next person, maybe APM, is about 18,000 or 19,000. But council votes in, in, in Ogun State is about something thousand. So why, why did you declare a winner in Ogun State? Why? It, it doesn't make sense. Mm. You know, they, you can go to Kano, you can go to Sokoto. You, okay, let's look at Benue. That's another state where INEC says it's inconclusive and they're going to conduct, you know, a rerun. The gap between PDP, uh, sitting governor, um, 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 Autumn, and the candidate, Jimmy, is, is about 81,000. Now, there, there, there are cancel, cancel votes of 121,000 votes. No, are you saying that the 121,000 votes are all going to vote? you know, for, 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 for the APC candidates, you know, so it, 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 it begins to, 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 to show very clearly, you know, that this, 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 uh, that INEC was only playing a script, you know, and it's unfortunate because democracy ought not to be like that. If state institutions were, were, were truly independent and were not subject to manipulation, you know, to, 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 to undo, you know, pressure and, and, and working, you know, to please, you know, certain power, power brokers, we will not be where we are. I don't know because where this um, rerun, you know, debacle emanated from is what is called the Oshun, you know, playbook. It's the Oshun playbook we're seeing because what happened in Oshun, the elections of September 22nd, 2018, it was conclusive, you know. But what did INEC do? They, they made sure they reduced, you know, they, they canceled votes, reduced results, you know, and re reduced results of the PDP candidate, the, uh, Senator Demola Adeleke, in Oshun State, so that the margin, of the gap was reduced to 353 votes. Oh, and they would say, okay, it is inconclusive because number of votes, you know, canceled were higher than the gap between the two uh, leading candidates. And so they ordered for a rerun, which happened on the 27th of September. And we all were witnesses to that so-called rerun, which was nothing but a sham, because we saw the role, you know, that the police played and other security agencies. We saw the roles that thugs, you know, auctions, you know, hoodlums imported from outside of, of Oshun State and from Oshun State. We saw how they targeted PDP, you know, candidates in Oshun State so that they ended up saying, oh, okay, now they, they, what was already concluded was now turned, you know, the victory of the PDP was now, you know, given to the APC candidates in Oshun State. And that's the playbook. So that's my fear for the so-called railroad of the 23rd, is that we may see the deployment of security forces, you know, the deployment of the military again, the deployment of, I mean, of all, the, the, the use of other state apparatus to, to, to make sure this, the ruling party, you know, claim, especially Kano, especially, you know, Sokoto, Adamawa because the, the presidential candidate of the PDP is an indigenous of Adamawa State, and I'm sure nothing will gratify the presidency, you know, as to rub it in the face of uh, former Vice President Atuko Abaka that, okay, you could not even deliver, you know, your state, you know, for your, for your party. So I, I have no confidence and in, in the so-called rerun of next week Saturday, and my, my, my lack of confidence stems from, you know, the, 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 the duplicitousness of INEC, the lack of in integrity, the lack of um, independence of INEC, the lack of capacity, as it were, honesty, fairness, 
of, of the electoral management body and of course the role of the, of the, of the military. And definitely it was a needless rerun. It was never, you know, uh, I mean, it, the, the, this, this rerun should never have been in the first place. Well, whatever an individual's um, political affiliations may be, you can't argue with the facts. There really is no basis mm -hmm. for these reruns. It's mm -hmm. quite clear what the mm -hmm. agenda is. And a lot of people share your opinions and share your disappointments and lack of confidence in INEC, such that March 9th came and they voted with their feet and stayed at home in huge numbers. What is your comment about that, what we saw, the lowest participation, voter participation, in recent history. What does that portend for our democracy? Thank you, Tundu. You know, the, the, the biggest, I mean, fallout from, from this 2019 general elections is the total disillusionment, you know, by, by majority of Nigerians. Prior to the, 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 the elections proper, there, there was a, a, a galvanizing, you know, of electorates, of adults, you know, from all the, the civil society groups, churches, you know, faith-based institutions, you know, media organizations, social media, conventional media, you know. I mean, for people to get their PVCs, to go register, get their permanent voter cards, because it is assumed and it is believed that in a democracy, you know, if you don't participate in choosing your leaders, you end up with whatever leadership is thrown up, and then you can't belly ache, you can't, you can't whine, you know, and say, oh, this, this leader is not good, because you have... And, and a, a constitutionally guaranteed right, you know, to choose the leaders of your choice. Now, Nigerians trooped out in, in huge numbers, proud to 2019, you know, proud to the, uh, the last um, wave of um, um, registration of new voters. We had about 70 something, 76, there are about million registered voters. At the end of the, uh, the, 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 the last registration exercise, there were 84, meaning about 14 million Nigerians, you know, trooped out, you know, to register for, 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 for elections and, and get their PVCs. Now, guess what? On the day of election, less than 30-something percent, about 29 or so, voted on the 23rd. And this was impacted by the, the shift, the postponement, on the, because the presidential election was meant to have been conducted on, the, on February 16th. Now, when, when people, you know, a, a few Nigerians, you know, stayed back, but at least about 29 million Nigerians trooped out en masse in their numbers, in their millions, across Nigeria, you know, to exercise their, their, their franchise, their civic responsibilities. But we also what played out in Lagos, where in the full, full glare of, 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 of camera, you know, in the whole world, we saw what thugs, we saw the role that the, 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 you know, thugs mobilized by a certain political party, you know, to, to, to sections where, you know, certain ethnic blocs, you know, that, that seem would vote for a, a, a particular political party. We saw what they did, how they burnt, you know, um, um, votes, votes that, are, that were already cast. They burnt ballot boxes. They chased the electorate away. We saw what, what role INEC officials played across Nigeria, especially in the southern part. They didn't turn up on time. When they did turn up, some of them protested that they hadn't gotten, you know, their allowances and they were not going to do, do the votes. And then all of this played on. We saw the role of, I mean, all kinds of shenanigans we saw on, the, on, on February 16th. We saw, I, I mean, I witnessed so many, you know, um, localities, are, 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 especially in the southern part of Nigeria, where people could not vote. And so you had massive, you know, vote, voter suppression. A, 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 a very heart-wrenching story for me was somewhere in the, in the southeast, a woman you know, who, who went with her baby back on, you know, on her back and she went for voting. And by the time she was done because of delays and whatever, she didn't know the baby had died. Mm. Now, you had in places where people endured the elements, you know, as it were, to vote and ensure that the votes counted. And then you ended up with INEC saying, somewhere in, in Abia, for instance, 60,000 votes were cancelled in the presidential elections. And it was like that in almost every state of Nigeria. And of course, by the time Nigerians saw the militarization, and do not forget that a few days before the elections, the president himself had come out to give a carte blanche, as it were, to the military, that anyone who tries to, you know, cut away ballot box or foment trouble during elections should be ready to pay with his or her life. In a democracy, what's the maximum penalty for, for, that, for ballot box snatching? I mean, if I remember me three years or an option of fine of yes. some millions of naira. But you, you said in a democracy that, that anyone who attempts to rig election or snatch ballot box will pay with his or her life. And that he had given the military, you know, to be ruthless 
with Nigerians. And so the military simply came out, you know, and obeyed the last order of the commander in chief. You know, so by the time it, it, it was the turn, two weeks after, of of course, by the time the result was announced, four days, five days after, we all witnessed, you know, the, 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 the snail pace of coalition and the announcement of results. You know, we saw everything that, that played out because all of that gap gave room to all kinds of shenanigans, of manipulations, of falsification and doctoring of, of results. By the time the, the results were announced, I mean... I'm not clairvoyant to have said, to, to say, okay, this person won or that person didn't win. But if you feel the pulse of the generality of Nigerians, there, were, there, there wasn't spontaneous rejoicing on the streets. Nigerians didn't break out on the streets, you know, in their millions, rejoicing that, oh, this is the will, the popular will. Of the, because one of the fundamental principles of democracy I highlighted earlier is the sanctity of the ballot box. And when results are announced, this will show because the, the, the reaction of the people will tell. You know, there was mourning on the other, I mean, on the, on the other hand, rather than rejoicing, spontaneous rejoicing, and people trooping out to the streets to, to, you know, to celebrate victory of democracy, there was, there was, there was, there was a silence of the grave, as, of the graveyard, as it were. There was mourning all over Nigeria, as, except for a few states in the north where you have some of these, the, 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 the jobless youth, you know, getting themselves in trucks and ramshackles and tricycles going all over the place, some even killing themselves in the process, you know. Besides that, and there's an allegation, and I have no reason to doubt it, that this were paid, you know, boys doing, doing uh, youth doing this. You know, this all played up to March, um, uh, March 9th, the, the gubernatorial and the state House of Assembly election. And of course, Nigerians, you know, expressed their disillusionment, their disappointment, their utter revulsion at what had transpired two weeks earlier by, 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 by deciding, you know, that if my votes do not count, there is no point. Because the, the sanctity of the ballot box, it's, it's a critical component in a democracy. Once the, the ballot box is no longer sacred, once people do not have respect and, 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 and awe, you know, for, this, for the ballot box, it's no longer a democracy, you know. So I am not surprised, and the biggest fallout for me from this is that Going forward, I think majority. I, 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 the last time I voted was 1993, June 12 elections, and I was a young man then, you know. But when I saw what the military did, you know, IBB and all the elections, and Abacha came, we initially we thought, oh, he was going to um, restore uh, the, the mandate of about 40 million Nigerians, popularly and freely given to uh, late uh, uh, Chief Bashir M.K. Wabiola. You know, when I saw what he did, I was pretty young, still just came out of University of Benin, you know, so I thought, I mean, there's no point voting if my votes would not count. And I never voted in Nigeria until these elections. But I can tell you, not just myself, I know so many people who have decided there's no point voting. I mean, I read an article by Professor, an interview by Professor ABC Nwosu, you know, a former minister, a, 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 I mean, an intellectual, you know, of note in Nigeria. I mean, he said, if this is what democracy in Nigeria is, that he has decided for the rest of his life, he's not voting again in Nigeria. There are tens, you know, of thousands of people, you know, on social media who, who decided it's not worth it, I'm not voting again, and I'm one of them. So what does this portend for the elections of March 23rd? Is there going to be an even more steep decline in participation? And that would mean the states, well, the four states where PDP is in the lead, that momentum will be lost since people are just so disillusioned by the whole process. That may not necessarily be the case because take, for instance, Benue. The, 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 the issue may seem to be purely political, but the, 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 the issue in Benue goes way beyond politics. We're talking about the, the, the ultimate survival of a people, their way of life, their, the protection of their culture and heritage. You know, if the people feel they are under threat, you know, of a marauding army that, that nobody seems to be able to, you know, arrest the headsmen, as it were, I'm talking about the headsmen, you know, the killings going on in the, in the Benue, you know, valley and all of that. So I don't think the people of, of Benue State need any further motivation to come out and make sure that, I mean, a man... I mean, Governor Autumn may not have performed excellently. I'm not from this state, but I mean, I follow current affairs, you know, seriously. The, the general opinion is that maybe he hasn't done really well, but that he stood up to be counted. 
on the side of his people that they were not totally annihilated, that they were not, you know, run over. He could have played cheap politics. He could have remained in APC, you know, and, and I mean, get a free ticket to return and all of that, you know. But he chose to stand on the side of his people. I think no, the, the people of Benue State do not need any other motivation for that. Kano, the same thing. I do not think the Kwan Kwasia movement, because the, the big picture in Kano is what I'm highlighting, just like the big picture in, in Benue State I just highlighted. What is the big picture in Kano? It's not so much about PDP, APC, it's about personalities. Two friends who were friends before, they were political allies before, and then they fell out because Former Governor Rabbi Musa Kwankwanso did not actually leave APC because of a falling out with Buhari or whoever, but with his the, 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 some deputy who he helped, you know, to make governor, and then who turned against him, made him personal non grata in Kano for almost all the years that um, um, I mean before elections began. So I mean, I believe Rabbi Musa Kwankwanso and his Kwankwansia movement are hell bent. There, there's a determination to ensure that I mean, uh, 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 Abdullah Ganduji does not return. As, and don't forget that Kano State has, has got this history over time. Kwan Kwan saw himself in his first tenure. When he wanted the second time, he did not get it. He lost to Ibrahim Shekarao, who was able to do two terms. And then Shekarao wanted to put somebody, but he lost. You know, so that's how politics of, of Kano is unique. You know, so in Adama State, I do not think the PDP has any additional motivation because don't forget the presidential election has ended up in the courts. And part of the argument of the PDP, I'm thinking, you know, would be that, okay, we won all these states. We want Sokoto, we want Bauchi, we want, Kano, we want Kano, we want Benue. So how could we have lost, if we won in the governorship, how could we have lost, you know, in the press? So, and of course, for the sake of pride, for vice, former presidents like Tito Abubakar, pride is at, is at stake. Honor is at stake that, okay, as presidential candidate, I should be able to deliver, you know, he won narrowly uh, the presidential election by, I think, about 10,000 margin between him and APC, you know. So in this gubernatorial election, I think there will be motivation. You know, so the same thing, I mean, Sokoto, I do not think um, Governor Tambua needs any further motivation because, I mean, if he does not get reelected as governor, what, what else does he have to do? He's not going to the Senate, he's not doing anything, you know, so, and uh, the politicians that I know in Nigeria, you know, they hate to be high, you. you know, politics is their live wire, it's what they feed on, you know, so I think um, voter, voter apathy may not necessarily play up, except you have the, the, the nuclear, you know, issue, which is militarization. If the military come out the way they did in Oshun State and the way they did on uh, February 16th and, and February, uh, March 9th, especially in Rivers, if the military played the same role they played in Rivers, the shame of a nation that happened, the travesty that happened in Rivers, if it happens in any of these other states, of course, people would come out because almost 100 plus people have died in these elections. 100 people plus, all up, up to that, died in these elections. In, in a democracy, we're not at war. So is that democracy or is that warfare? I, I, I really don't understand. Thank you for that and um, for that sort of background information on what to expect for the different state. If you believe that the only thing that might stop people from coming out is the militarization of these different um, states um, next, next week, how do you think the idea that there will be VIPs at the different polling units will reinforce a sense of safety for the electorate, or do you think that the electorate could actually stay away thinking that this looks more, the stakes continue to get higher as more VIPs might be at polling units? And also, too, just when you've described what's, what's at stake, I mean, it is a do or die for some of these governors. How do we expect that? Do we expect that to be a positive influence, or do we just think that would neutralize the military? Let, let, let me say this, and I'll give you background information. The last campaign uh, primary, uh, the, the last campaign rally of uh, the, the, the rally of the APC was, was at Portacourt, and um, we all saw the Minister for Transport, the war chants, you know, the rallying of the people that if, if the sitting governor of Wiki wants war, we're bringing war to him. And the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria sat there. And he took it all in. All of them, the party chair, the hierarchy, they, they lapped it all up, you know. And that was what played out in the, uh, on March 9th in River State. What do I expect the president to do now? I haven't witnessed everything that has happened, you know. I, and I said 60 to 70 percent of the blame of everything that has transpired on the 23rd of February, on the 9th of March, I put it squarely at the feet of the president because he has enormous powers to have 
either nipped in the bud some of these ugly monsters that reared its head, but he failed, you know, and he failed abysmally in doing that. I expect him as a statesman, I expect him now at this juncture to rise up to the, to the, to the level of a, of, a, of a statesman that he is, you know, and say to all the gladiators, this is election, it is not war. You do not have to kill your people, you know, to get to political power. If, if your people want you, they would vote for you. And I expect him to go beyond the rhetoric and actually say to the military, you have no role to play in these elections. And tell the police, adhere to, to, to INEC guidelines. What is the guideline of INEC? There will be about three policemen in every polling unit, you know, and they will not be armed. Now, Outside of the precincts of the polling units, there will be, you know, um, I mean, a patrol, military uh, police patrol. Now, ex except INEC specifically requests for, you know, um, extra security for whatever reason, that is when you can deploy, you know, armed men to polling units. You know, so the issue of VIP is a no-no. It's a complete non-starter. It is totally against INEC guidelines. What, 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 are, what, what, what is the role of a VIP? Because that reminds me of what happened in AKT elections. You know, you had, you had governors from contiguous states, you know, from Ondo State, you know, Ibada, I mean, Okit was carved out from Ondo State. So you had the governor from there. You have, of course, the peripatetic governor of, um, of Kaduna State, Nasir Rufai, who, who would leave Kaduna and go to Anambra to go and supervise elections. I mean, it's unbelievable, you know. And you have Kaduna, as it were, burning, you know. So, I mean, you have people like that playing massive role, you know, main roles in the conduct of state elections, why won't you sit down in your own state, you know, and face your issue, you know, man your own affairs and let the states, let INEC, let the, the, the other, you know, state institutions, you know, conduct free, fair and credible elections. The issue of VIP or no VIP does not arise. It is against INEC, you know, guidelines and regulations. And this is when I would, apart from the president making the statement he should make and giving direct instructions to the military not to show up anywhere Near, near our, our electoral, electoral you know, you know con uh, conduct in all these uh, yeah, states, states that, that they are not going to be held, held. And, and also you know you encouraging Nigerians to come out and exercise their franchise. franchise. Now, now I would I also expect INEC at the same time, on a daily basis, as they did before, you know, the conduct of the 23rd elections, you know, to, to on a daily basis, reassure Nigerians in those places that come out and vote and clearly spell out to so-called VIPs that you are not needed, if you have no business, if you are not a state collection agent, you are not a local government collection, you are not a polling, you have no business anywhere near polling units. What's your business there except to foment trouble? You know, so that, that, that's what I think. Mm. I just want to go back to the, your, your comments about President Buhari. You made it earlier. You reinforced it again about the responsibility that lay squarely um, at his doorstep. Yesterday, we also had a guest who talked about the Constitution and the role of president and this father figure. One of the themes, one of the criticisms during Buhari's current term has been lack of communication. With this new mandate and especially with the debacle that has been 2019, in no uncertain terms, what does he need to do now going forward? What does he need to do with the, um, uh, on the heels of the 23rd coming up? And what is the gift that he has to give Nigeria when it comes to electoral reform after his term? Thank you, Viola. I forgot to add something in my last uh, comment. The, 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 the APC um, rally in Portacot that uh, Minister um, Amechi did the war chants and you know, rallied the people that they were going to give war. Imagine if the president, when he came up to speak, had, had responded to that to say, this is not war. You know, you know, this, this is, is politics. politics. There is no, we're not going to do war. Uh, you can pardon my minister. He's just been exuberant. You know, and maybe he's feeling disappointed. You know, that um, we are not going to be on the ballot. But please, I heard you, Rivers people. This is not war. I give you my word. Come out and vote. And proceeding from there, I never saw, you know, the president visit because when a president comes to a state for campaign, you know, the ideal thing in terms of protocol, in terms of uh, culture is, okay, you, you pay a visit to the sitting governor, whether he's your mem a member of your party or not, and you visit, you know, traditional rulers. I can't recall that President Buhari visited Governor Wiki 
you know, in his office. And imagine if uh, President Buhari had visited Governor Wiki and taken Rotimi Amechi and said, the two of you shake hands and let the camera, you know, show the world. In fact, the two of you hug each other and say to each other, this is, we are all brothers. I'm from Katina, but both of you are reverse indigenous. This is not war. This, that will have gone a long way to douse the tension. Because now you have all these gladiators, because on both parties, on both sides of the divide, you have these two, you know, all their, 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 their so-called, you know, um, um, errand boys, you know, as it were, you know, saying all sorts of incendiary remarks, you know, whipping up, hitting up the policy in reverse, and that's what played out to what we saw on March 9th. Going forward, what does they have to do now? Do not forget one of the lapses, one of the biggest um, um, mistakes of President Buhari that would have earned him, you know, great... Um, place, um, place in the history, history of this country, of this country was, was to refuse to have signed the Electoral mm -hmm. Act um, uh, amendment uh, deal that was, that was put to him. him. Four, Four times, times it was presented to him, him and he kept giving one, one excuse, excuse either frivolous or outrightly, you know, ridiculous excuses. Oh, the cop, they, 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 they were typographical errors. Oh, the numbering is not right. You know, and then I remember I was on the TV where people, I had another colleague on the panel then, who was vehemently that the, 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 the president and the APC were playing a script. It was not, never going to sign it. It was just using all of this as a delay tactics. And I was ready to give the president the benefit of that. I said, no, how can you make this document full of errors? I said, I mean, I, I mean, that, that is uncalled for. What, what do they do at the National Assembly? They should have, you know, well, well, you know, I mean, trained people in uh, bill drafting and all of that. You know, but he played out. It turned out to be exactly what that fellow had said. Because the, the president came out to say the last time that, oh, it's too close to election, so I cannot sign it. Because the signing of the Electoral, I mean, Electoral Act Amendment Bill would have removed the, the, the fiasco, the, the shame of the, the, the coalition, you know, the gap from polling units, you know, to local government, you know, uh, pollution center, to state pollution centers, because it is in these gaps that you, that you begin to have opportunity, you know, to rig, to falsify, to, to manipulate, because once, because what do you think politicians do when collision of results is going on? You think they fold their hands and they are sipping coffee or, or sipping, you know, wine or brandy and then watching the news like you and I do? That's not what they do. They are working the phones to know what is the margin because their agents are there. Who is leading? What is the margin? So as they do that, they begin to get a sense of where, you know, the, the outcome is still sitting. So they begin to plan, you know, counter moves, counter measures. But if President Buhari had signed the Electoral Amendment, you know, Act bill into law, now, the results from the coalition uh, polling units will have been, you know, electronically, you know, transmitted to the INEC head office, totally cutting out the opportunity for, for manipulation, you know, by all these political actors. But he refused to do that. You know, I mean, pro the, 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 the bill also, you know, provided stiff penalties for electoral offenders. And the list goes on, but he refused to do that. Going forward, I, I'm, and I'm glad Professor Mahmoud, you know, also said that much last week when he was presenting a certificate of returns to the National Assembly members, both the reps and the senators, that one of their you know, main tasks, and they should get down to it immediately, was to make sure that the Electoral you know, Act Amendment Bill you know, becomes law immediately. You know, yeah, that is good, but beyond that, beyond that, you see, they, they, it's not just about the laws. It is about, like I said, the office of the president you know, is so powerful. It, 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 it wields enormous powers. And you need someone there who is an avowed Democrat. In 2014, 2015, when President Buhari was, uh, candidate Buhari was campaigning, we were told that he's a reformed Democrat, forgetting about his military, you know, dictator, dictatorial tendencies and all of that. We were told he was, he was reformed, he's now a born again Democrat. If you ask me today, is President Buhari a Democrat? The answer is a big no. I am afraid for this democracy because until the, the democracy is not a destination, is not a bus stop, is a destination. You keep working at it, you keep fine tuning and improving on it. Now he's been given a second mandate, subject to the outcome of the, the election petition, you know, at the tribunal and then eventually at the Supreme Court. You know, I want to begin to see from the president actions, deeds that demonstrate his, his obedience to the rule of law, his respect for separation of powers. Because, because the, the action, action of the president in, remo in the removal of uh, uh, Chief uh, Justice, the suspended Chief Justice, Walter Nogue, is, is, is not democratic. democratic. That's, That's because we are in a constitutional democracy. democracy. You know, you, know, you, you, you went, went with a slate of hand, you know, with a purported ex parte order from a quasi, you know, judicial body, the, the, the Code of Conduct Tribunal, to remove the number one law officer of Nigeria because you are working out, you are working at a predetermined outcome. Now, the laying of siege at the National Assembly, 
that is one that, that has never been resolved as we speak. Now, also, when he removed um, Walter Onoge, I remember the National Assembly summoned an emergency meeting. But the same National Assembly did a hasty retreat because, number one, suddenly the members of APC who had been up in arms against the leadership of both chambers now suddenly saw a, a platform and they were going to be fully, you know, backed up with state institutions to finally move against them. And that's how the National Assembly shelved that move because if the, if the Senate and the House of Reps cannot stand up in a, in a democracy against the excesses of the executive arm of government, we are not in a democracy. Okay, Donald Trump is of the Republican Party. The Republican Party, you know, have majority in the Senate. But he declared an emergency, you know, on the southern border wall between Mexico and, and the U.S., you know, emergency so that he could get funds and all of that. Members of the, of the Republican Party, you know, allied with, Democra the, with, with Democrats, in the, in the Senate, Senate to vote, vote against, against, you know, that, that emergency declaration. declaration. I just watched this morning that Donald Trump vetoed, vetoed it. That is democracy, because the president do have, you know, the power of veto. But you should allow each arm of government in a democracy to play their role without excessive over overbearing, excessive, you know, intimidation, harassment. But when you now have weakness of state institutions, that, that seem to be, to be taking instructions, instructions, you know, and pandering to the whims and the caprices of one arm of government, which is the executive. We are no longer in a democracy. So I would, I would urge and appeal as a Nigerian, you know, as someone who once loved President Muhammad Buhari. I mean, I wrote a book, I, I dedicated it to him, you know, until, for whatever reason, the book could not be published on time. And so I'm grateful that that book was never published because I would not be able to say what I'm saying today if that book was published. This is not democracy. Checks and balances. Those who, 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 who formed, who conceived of the idea of democracy, you know, built internal mechanisms that self-regulate democratic governance. Otherwise, we're in a tyranny. You know, so if, if, if the, the, the arms of government are not truly separate and distinct, if senators go to the, to the, to the executive to open up with them and pander to the whims of the head of the executive arm of government, if the judiciary have to watch where the president is, is, is leaning towards before they make judicial decisions, we're, 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 we're in a tyranny, we're in a dictatorship, we're in open fascism, you know, and that's not what democracy is. So I would urge and appeal to President Mohamed Bouhari because, you know, leaders in this part of the world do not, they think about short terms. They do not think about the long term. They don't think about the verdict of history. You may do all of this, get away with it, get second term, even get third term if you so desire. But what about the verdict of history? There are, there are Nigerian leaders today, especially military dictators, who, when you mention their name in the Committee of Civilized People, you know, people, you know, raise up their noses and snort against them. Yes, you are, you are a former head of state, maybe alive or dead, but you do not have any reputation because every leader should be afraid, should be worried about the verdict of history. And, and I urge President Muhammad Buhari, do not listen to the ox, the psychophants around you. You know, because we've seen this play out all over, all over again, and we always know the way it ends. This is the time to rise up and be a statesman. This is the time to ri rise up and, 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 and enshrine democratic practices in Nigeria. Well, you've been talking about the separation of powers as a fundamental, which is absolutely correct in a democracy. But we do. The fact is that we are still under this post-military hangover. There's a subsisting Supreme Court ruling. Actually, the case was found by APC, Femi Gwajabi Amila of the APC. And the Supreme Court was clear about the deployment of the military during elections and look at what we've just observed. So I really have no argument there. But do you feel that as a final component of this democratic process, do you feel that ju the judiciary can redeem this process? What level of confidence do you repose in the election tribunals that have already gotten underway? Specifically, um, the case of PDP's presidential candidate, Atiku Abubakar. What are the odds of a fair hearing and also the odds of his success? Because those are two separate propositions. Thank you, Tunu. Very, very apt, you know, and very correct, you know. Um, the, 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 the designers of democracy, you know, as a system of governance, had envisaged there is nothing man does that is perfect. But in its imperfections, there are self safeguards, there are inbuilt mechanisms, you know, to, to, to check excesses of any of the arms of government or institutions of state. Self-correcting mechanisms are inbuilt. And one of them is the judiciary. And like I alluded to earlier, you know, when 
it comes down to brass tacks. You know, when the chips are down, the, the last, that is why it is, it is called the last hope. Not common man, of everybody. You know, so, I mean, in Nigeria's history, we have seen so-called governors, you know, who, who, who were, you know, um, pronounced duly elected by INEC. You know, but eventually, you know, it took years, three years, I remember, former governor, um, Olaguso Yunyola, his second term, he, he spent almost three and a half years, almost four years term, tenure, before the Supreme Court finally said, you were not duly elected, you are, you, you, you know, your elections were fraudulent, and Alegba Shola, you know, Governor Arufa was declared winner. The same thing in um, Olusha Gagun late, you know, eventually the, the court pronounced um, um, the, the, the other person in Ondo State, you know, as, as winner. You know, so we have seen that in, Peter Obi comes to mind in, in Anambra State, you know, I mean, um, uh, former President Olusha Gagun deployed state, state apparatus, you know, to install Andy Uba as governor of Anambra State, you know, but the Supreme Court said, no, you, you are not the winner. It took years, and it took a lot of suffering and pain, you know, but Peter Obi became governor. Even even at that, that, he, he, he had he barely had sat down, down barely even, you know, you know dust, dust, dusted, dusted up the office to sit down when they said, oh, your time is expired. expired. And they had and to go back to court again. And the court had to make a pronunciation or a determination that when does, you know, tenure begin? Is it when you are sworn in or it is fixed, cast in stone? And the people of said, no, that is unjust. You know, it cannot be when you, that it cannot be because it is 29 May. No, it is when you take the oath of office. And so we have seen the judiciary, even in these 20 years of democracy, we, regardless of the hangover of the military, you know, dictatorship we, we came out from, we have seen the judiciary remedy, you know, try to, to, to by judici judicial pronouncement, you know, put in place, you know, certain um, um, bulwarks against the excesses of both the electoral management body of, of the executive arm of government by, you know, political players and all of that. So my hope in this situation, if there is ever any time that Nigeria, Nigeria needs, needs the judiciary to rise up, up and, and stand up and be counted as patriots. And this, and this, this reminds me of a, a movie I love to watch over and over again. I, I hardly, I love to watch movies, but I don't love to watch movies a couple of times because once I watch it once, I think there's nothing else to watch. But Le, Le Amistad, that's the name of the movie, you know, about the slaves, you know, being moved from Africa, you know, to the U.S. And then, of course, the, the, there was rebellion on the course of the, of the, of the, of the ocean voyage and they killed their captors. By the time the, the, the ship got docked in America, they were taken to court. And the case went all the way up to the Supreme Court. Of course, slavery had been abolished in America. You know, and of course, the, the Declaration of Independence, the first statement there is that every man is born with certain inalienable rights. One of them is liberty, life, you know, and all of that. And the Supreme Court, against, you know, the grain, you know, the popular grain, the mood of the white supremacists, you know, the, the, the political establishment, the Supreme Court rose up on the side of the constitution, on the side of history, to be counted, and said, yes, these Africans who we don't have a name, they have no history, they have no records, they are slaves, but because in America, slavery has been abolished, they have rights, and so the, the, the part of, in, ex in exercising these rights, they had rights to resist, you know, their oppressors, even if it meant killing them. And those, those slaves were set free. The Supreme Court even, you know, pro pro you know made pronouncements that they should be taken back, they should be ferried back to Africa, and they should be compensated. So I am appealing to the judiciary, if there was ever any time in the history of Nigeria, this is the time the judiciary should rise up and be counted as patriots. Now, what is the, the, the probability, you know, of the presidential elections going the other way, that is, you know, going to the way of, uh, from a, of PDP and Atiku Abaka? I would say very slim. I would say less than average. Because they, if you know what it takes to win an election petition, it's not about showing videos of violence and crimes. It is about actual proving. You have to prove that the margin of scores, the votes count, the votes that were given to your opponent were not, you know, the actual votes that is scored, either by manipulation, either by it was deducted or it was overvoted. Or that is what you need to prove, and you need evidence. That is why, you know, the preliminary skirmishes that we saw was that the PDP, you know, legal team went to court to request for. Um, uh, you know, right, the, 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 the leave of court, you know, to, to subpoena the documents, you know, the electoral materials that were used for the conduct. So, I, I, I mean, I was following, I have been following the Oshun State um, Election Tribunal at, at, at the tribunal, you know, the petition, the, the, the tribunal in Abuja. And I know that the weight, because if you have to do, if you have to do what was done or what has been done in Oshun State to, you know, prosecute 
successfully. Imagine, Imagine replicating, replicating that, that in 36 states and the and FCT. FCT. That's, That's a huge body. body. And the and onus of proof is on you. You, you know, you it, the PDP is the one to prove that, that yes, we won, and, and supply, you know, not, not hearsay, you know, not videos, not, uh, but hard proof. The, the, the members, members of the, of the panel, panel will weigh the evidence, the evidence that is before them to make a decision. A decision. And if and they're not they satisfied, of course, they can go, go to the Supreme Court, which is the final um, court of, 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 of justice in this case. You know, I'm not um, um, unnecessarily hopeful. I'm, 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 I'm a practical, you know, um, um, I'm a practical person, you know, but for whatever it is worth, I mean, the call that um, Atuko Abaka should have called President Buhari was a no-no. I never, never subscribe to it. I think we should test this so-called victory in the courts. And let's hear what the judiciary will say. Thank you. In light of your very little faith in um, this petition for, um, for the uh, former vice president um, coming, coming through, and which definitely means that President Buhari has a mandate, no matter how weak and no matter how much damage has been done, um, even from your voice, the disappointment is clear. From the voter turnout, the disappointment is clear. It is very clear that Nigerians have been beaten and battered by this process. And also, there's been quite a bit of division um, through this process, not a little bit. There's been a lot of division from a state perspective, from an indigent perspective. The fact of the, Ni the, fact of the matter is Nigerians don't feel like citizens of Nigeria. How does a person with a weak mandate like President Buhari unify a nation that has been broken by the process that actually brought him to office? Yeah, yeah. Good, good, good question, Biola. Very good question. That's why I said, you know, earlier in my comments, I, I, I would expect President Buhari to suddenly realize, you know, that he's got nothing to lose anymore, you know, and um, he should look at posterity. And what, what would the, the verdict, verdict of history, history be, be to him? him. You know, you know he's, 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 he's gotten two, two, chances two chances now, you know, to write his name, either, either in black or in gold. gold. You, know, you know, the, 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 the era, era of, dictatorship. of dictatorship. We know the role he played, how people were executed, even, you know, a law was passed, and people who had committed an offense before the law was passed were executed. You know, you that's know, the, the, the drugs and whatever offenses uh, um, decree. decree. And he executed people who had committed the offense before the law. You know, so that was the history that we know. And then what is playing out now? The first time, if you ask me to score him in his first term, I'll give him 25 or 30 percent over 100. So that is an abysmal failure. Now, this second term, because like I said, I'm a very practical person. You know, I do not think... I mean, I mean, no matter how valiant the PDP tries, tries at the tribunal, the tribunal it, it, it will be sh nothing short of a miracle for the PDP to get victory. You know, you know for the for presidential, presidential petition, that's what I mean. Because, because the burden of proof, the, own, the, the, rest, the sheer weight of evidence that is needed, you know, is daunting. You know, but that is where we, we need men of good conscience. We need people who love this country, the elders. And that is where I'm surprised that the National Peace Committee, you know, when they did that thing and they called people and they were signing, they were making photographs, I wrote an article in the Disney and I said, what is the basis, what is the excitement all about? Because the document is not actionable in a law court. It does, there's no sanctions inherent in the document. It is not backed by any law, any legal, whatever. So it's just moral suasion, as it were. And, and I've, I've studied President Buhari very well. Whenever nothing is at stake, he would be so glad to come out and sign, you know, like the not too young to run. He was so excited he signed it. But whenever anything important that has direct impact on him, you know, he will, he will shy away from it, give all manner of excuses. This is the time for President Buhari to rise up and be a statesman and be like George Washington and, and begin to act from now. I mean, from the day was, and begin to act. I expect there is nothing stopping President Buhari taking a drive to Vice President Abubakar's house and say, you're my brother. We need to build Nigeria. I respect you. You've done well. You are going to the courts. I have no business with you going to the courts. But I need you. You know, I, I need you to support me. If the, if the courts say you are the victor, no problem. But I need you. I, the rhetoric from the president, he needs to give instructions, you know, to his, to his, to his sidekicks, you know, to tone down the rhetoric. This, this verbal assault, this, this swash, swash buckling, you know, we are, we are conquerors. We have conquered Nigeria because the sense most... Elite, elite Nigerians, Nigerians both, in, both in, all, all intellectuals, intellectuals, the sense we feel is that, oh, we have conquered every, 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 every the space, so we can do as we wish. No, that would be totally, that would be totally, you know, and, and a lack 
of deep understanding, you know, of history. Of but the even president, Nigeria's Mr. History. No, I the president did ask, ask, he did ask his supporters yeah, not to gloat after he won. Yeah. President Buhari asked his supporters but not to gloat. But he asked them not to gloat, but they've been gloating. Not, not just gloating, they've been saying all kind of incendiary statements. And the president, I said, needs to call. Apart from calling, he needs to pay Vice President at school. You, you are trying to heal the divisions in the land because there is deep divisions. If there were divisions before the elections, the divisions have become a chasm. It's become wider now. You know, it's become gullies. It's become wide. So he needs to. His 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 his, his, his responsibility now is to bring the nation together. Is to heal this land. Let me tell you something. The last point. On, 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 on democracy the, in the principles is good governance. Bill Clinton said, the former president of America said, good politics would always produce good governance. There will never be good governance. There will never be, there will never be progress. Yes. Thank you so much. On that note, yes. thank you for that thorough exposition on good governance. It's time now for a short break now. Well, when we return, Akin Bode Olua Femi, environment activist and tobacco control advocate, will be joining us to discuss tobacco control efforts of the government. Stay with us.